but before we, we get started, I wanted to go over a few housekeeping tips. So again, please um, make sure your phone lines are muted and do not use your video um, just so we can have the best bandwidth on the call. Um, and throughout the session, please type in any questions you have in the chat and we will either try to chat in responses or we will get to them at the end of the session. Um, Shauna already wrote this into the chat. Thank you, Shauna. But today's session will be about um, half of the session will focus on resources and common questions and the other uh, second half will focus on an open question and answer session so we can unmute folks at the end as well. Um, and we will send out a recording after this session to anyone who um, wasn't able to join or maybe missed part of it. We do recommend that everyone stays on for the full session um, in case the, their questions are similar to other folks who ask questions or um, something comes up that uh, you know, maybe you didn't realize you had a question about. So, um, so definitely stay on for the whole session, but if not, we will be sending out that recording. Um, and just a little overview of just the office hours in general and ICF. Um, ICF has been working with HUD's Office of Housing Counseling on certification technical assistance for the past um, six months or so. So you have probably <laughs> heard from either folks at ICF or the OHC technical assistance inbox with questions or resources. Um, so thanks, thanks everyone for, for joining this session and we're excited today to be partnering with RCAC to cover some of these certification exam study resources and tips. So we have Teresa Bardwell here from RCAC. Um, but before we get into today's session, I want to hand it over to Gerald Mayer to give some opening remarks. Jerry? Oh, well, thank you, Rachel, and, and thank you to everyone for joining uh, today. I especially want to say thank you to Rural Community Assistance Corporation, and as you all are, are probably aware, they are a HUD-approved intermediary and also one of our training grantees and provide a lot of great training for uh, our housing counselors nationwide. And I also want to say thank you to, especially to HUD's Community Compass Contractor, ICF, uh, for their help uh, on today's session and for all the good technical assistance they're providing uh, to all the participants today. Um, if we could move on to the agenda. Okay, so today um, we have a, a great opportunity to learn about uh, you know, certification training and the various resources that are available to you. There'll be um, uh, uh, questions and answers uh, on the various exam topics, some great tips on preparation for the exam, uh, and then in the end, uh, some really good questions and answers uh, to help you uh, through the rough spots on this process. Uh, we know that it's a difficult process A professional certification uh, is designed to be meaningful and and uh, and elevate the housing counselor in the real estate industry and put them on the same footing as all of the other real estate professionals that we do business with on a daily basis. And as we are dealing with the effects of COVID-19 and 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 with very highly specialized information such as the CARES Act and the various loss mitigation and forbearance and moratoriums and things like that associated with the COVID-19 national emergency, housing counselors are on the front line of assisting clients uh, navigate these very, very difficult processes. We saw this during the, the foreclosure crisis around 2007, and here we are seeing the central role of housing counselors again in the forefront of helping uh, consumers uh, through these difficult housing issues. So housing counselor certification, very important uh, in, in this entire uh, effort. Um, so uh, uh, thank you again for joining. And uh, with that, I'll turn the microphone back over to uh, Rachel. Thanks so much, Jerry. Um, yeah, we're definitely excited everyone was able to join today. And as Jerry mentioned in our agenda, we will get started with some certification training and resources. Um, so the first thing we wanted to cover today is the training digest. So some folks may know about the training digest. It highly corresponds to and matches the information that the HUD Housing Counseling Listserv sends out every week. So I know many of you on the phone probably received that listserv. Um, and we do update this web page with upcoming trainings, many of which are focused on certification from um, industry partners, 
such as RCAC, who we have on the phone today, other um, HUD funded intermediaries, and other um, housing counseling partner training providers. We definitely recommend bookmarking this training digest. We update it every Monday morning, so it has new courses available every week. And like I said, many of those courses relate to certification. So if you're looking for an upcoming training, I think this is sort of your best bet to get a comprehensive overview of all housing counseling training that's upcoming. Um, the link is in the um, PowerPoint, which we will send out following the webinar, but I will also add it to the chat as well, um, just so everyone has that link and can go ahead and bookmark it. The next uh, subject we wanted to cover today is the information available on HUDHousingCounselors.com. So there are a few websites associated with housing counseling and certification. So um, we definitely make sure uh, or want to make sure that folks know what the different websites provide and where to go for which information. So HUDHousingCounselors.com is the website that handles all of the testing information. So the actual online exam information is located on HUDHousingCounselors.com. You can register for exams in person or online through HUDHousingCounselors.com. And the official HUD um, resources and training related to the exam is on that website. So in addition to the HUD Exchange, which provides technical assistance resources, information about certification, um, and other you know, tools and helpful resources, and has that training digest, we definitely want to make sure folks are looking at HUDHousingCounselors.com and accessing these very important resources. So the first important resource is the Knowledge Assessment Tool. Um, and we have, again, links in these um, in this slide deck that we will send out following the presentation. And I will chat the link to HUDHousingCounselors.com in the chat for folks to save that page. And one thing to note um, before I talk about a little bit about what's in these um, different pages is that you need to create an account on HUDHousingCounselors.com to access the knowledge assessment tool. So it's, it's really quick to create an account. Anyone can do it. Um, you just put in a few pieces of, pieces of information, and then once you take the knowledge assessment tool and you take the training modules, if you take the exam, your score and the um, information about the next steps after you pass the exam are also available through your HUDHousingCounselors.com account. So it's really essential that you, you know, go ahead and set that up to access these important resources. The knowledge assessment tool is really the first stop for HUDHousingCounselors.com because it will review a bunch of the different topic areas covered on the exam and then provide you with a summary report of where you may need to focus your studying on. So we really recommend that everyone takes the knowledge assessment tool as the very first step in their studying process because this will really help you understand, you know, which information you might have a very good handle on already, which information you might need to focus a little bit more on in your studies. Um, and we know different counselors, you know, specialize in different topic areas, so not everyone will have the same study plan. And we really, um, you know, recommend that everyone targets their studying in a way that works for them. And, you know, one study approach won't work for, for every counselor. So um, definitely start with this knowledge assessment tool to see which skill sets you might need to, to focus your studies on. Um, following the knowledge assessment tool, there are several training modules available on HUDHousingCounselors.com and they correspond to the different sections of the HUD certification exam. And we really recommend everyone progresses through all of these training modules as another crucial study step. Um, these, you know, were designed with the exam in mind and will really help folks um, brush up on these different areas. In addition to the information on HUDHousingCounselors.com, we recommend that people look into the training partners websites. Um, they have upcoming trainings listed there, different study groups um, and other information. We also link to the different training partners 
that HUD has through that training digest that I mentioned earlier. But if you're looking to browse through a specific training partner's upcoming trainings, you can go straight to the source as well um, through these different HUD funded training partners. And again, we have, we have RCAC on the phone today that has some upcoming HUD core study groups. So we will cover that as well. Um, and that, that sort of brings me to my next topic, which is the upcoming study groups. The HUD Exchange has a study groups page that we update frequently to link to any upcoming study groups as they become available. So some of the ones that are open for registration right now are through Housing Action Illinois. There's an upcoming study group at the end of April. Um, RCAC has several um, upcoming core study groups um, throughout April and all the way through August. And the National Stabilization Corporation has a study group in early June. So we recommend that folks sign up for these study groups. People have said that they're you know, very helpful in just helping them absorb and understand the content in the exam and um, recommend you, you know, sign up for these in advance of the, the date that you are taking the test, whenever that may be. Um, and I will cover more you know, tips and strategies for preparing for the test, whether you're taking it online or in person um, at the end of the presentation. The other resource I wanted to cover is the Housing Counseling Certification Facebook group. So there's actually a dedicated Facebook group called HUD Housing Counselor exam prep. Um, it's a public Facebook group and it's for housing counselors and other professionals who are looking to study for the HUD housing counselor exam and people, you know, informally share study tips, videos, links to webinars and trainings, and then other sort of strategies that they have found helpful for studying and passing the exam. Um, this is not a HUD sponsored resource. This is definitely just a community group with other housing counselors, but people have found that you know, sharing resources and strategies with other housing counselors really helps them prepare for the exam. Someone might have a study resource that they found particularly helpful or some advice on study groups or different things that counselors can do to prepare for the exam. So definitely recommend checking out this exam preparation Facebook group if you're looking for that sense of community. And it also could be really helpful to link up with other counselors either at your organization or within your intermediary network, other organizations that you may have connections with, finding counselors that have passed the exam and may have advice to share or different resources that have been helpful for them. Those are all really helpful strategies. I think, you know, finding a study buddy is always a, a great way to get prepared for the exam. So now I'm going to hand it over to Teresa from RCAC, who will give us a you know more deep dive um, overview into the different exam topics and then some of our common questions. Teresa. Great, thank you, Rachel. And I wanted to thank ICF and HUD for including us to represent the training partners this morning. We take the, the uh, preparation for the exam very seriously and you know, we're there to do whatever we can to help our counselors get certified. We know how critical it is at this point. So I do wanna go ahead and, and get into the six exam topics first. Um, these were outlined by the Dodd-Frank uh, regulation in 2010, and it's kind of a general federal uh, look at housing counseling. So as a counselor, you'll need to know your state, but you wanna make sure you're familiar with the federal. So the financial management goes into budgets, action plans, um, FICO and credit scores. Um, it also talks about some of the regs that you need to be aware of that um, have to deal with financial management. Um, and it also talks about managing your assets and protecting your assets. So you'll take a look at uh, predatory lending and ID theft, which we certainly see a lot of these days. Then you'll get into housing affordability, and that will help you determine are, are you able to rent or buy. Uh, this is the math section where you have all those wonderful ratios that you will need to memorize. Uh, once you memorize them, the math becomes very easy. Then you just break it down into sections. We'll talk a little more about that in a minute. Um, but it also gets into down payment assistance, um, you know, things that are available for, um, you know, our housing choice voucher for veterans, for seniors. And so you'll need to be familiar with all of that information. Then you'll move on to fair housing. And 
It talks about the history, the timeline, which you need to be familiar with. Uh, it goes into protected classes, talks about the difference between modification and accommodation, you know, what is involved in the federal law with um, making sure you're, you're meeting all of those regulations uh, that are covered in the timeline. It also goes into the complaints and the process, so you need to be fully familiar with that. And then it ends their section with uh, affirmatively furthering fair housing. There has been some changes to that recently. So if you haven't read the study guide for since September, you'll need to go back and make sure you've picked up those changes. Then with home ownership, there's kind of two sections to this part. Um, it goes through pre-purchase, which covers um, your steps to home ownership. Um, you know, financing, insurance, different mortgage types, um, also um, down payment assistance, covers a little bit on rental assistance too in, in this section, and also gets into all of the regulations, the RESPA, the TILA, the HOPA, and um, the new documents, they're not so new anymore, but the TRID documents, TILA, RESPA, um, integrated disclosure documents, which include the loan estimate and the closing disclosure. And so you'll need to be familiar with all of that information. Uh, it also gets into post-purchase, so we want to make sure you understand that people need to maintain their houses, um, how to, to do it yourself, uh, green, you know, being going green, and also emergency preparedness uh, to make sure that, you know, we certainly have disasters around the country now and that people are as prepared as they can be for those. So it goes into that some, and ready.gov is a great site um, for getting information for that. Then we're going to move on to avoiding foreclosure and eviction. We want to make sure if we get people into housing that hopefully we can keep them sustainable. So the section starts out with some of the history on the past programs, the hardest hit, uh, the National Foreclosure Mitigation Counseling and the Making Home Affordable. And then it gets into uh, things that you need to be aware of to try and help your clients um, get into the proper uh, products that are available. We know things are changing rapidly as we have the forbearance and there'll be updates to, um, you know, for the test, you don't need to know about the, the new forbearance information. All you need to know is what's in the study guide. But, you know, from a counseling standpoint, you'll get ready, but certainly for the test, it's more on uh, the things that have been done in the past and some of the kind of steady things. You wanna be very familiar with the FHA because that is a HUD product. So you'll have the FHA waterfall, different options that are available. It'll also talk about uh, non-judicial and judicial foreclosure. And uh, you'll need to be familiar with those, uh, the differences between those two. Uh, then it gets into, uh, you know, as we get down to the end and people are not uh, able to stay in their houses, what are their options to, to move on? So you, it goes through the retention options first, what can we do to stay? And then it goes into transition. And so deed and lieu, pre-foreclosure sale or short sale. Um, and then, you know, what, what do folks need to do to move on, to transition on? So those are all covered in that section. And then our last section is actually one of the shorter ones, but it, it's pretty packed with information. Uh, the tenancy goes through, uh, you know, rental affordability. Uh, what are some of the obstacles that you might need to overcome, particularly if you've had to transition into rental housing? Uh, what are the costs? It goes through lease agreements, and I think that's something folks are not as familiar with. So you'll want to spend a little bit of time there, make sure you're comfortable with them. Uh, general landlord tenant. Uh, tenant right issues, what are the responsibilities and rights, and then uh, it gets into the eviction process. And again, this varies from state to state, so this is looking at it more from a federal standpoint. You need to be aware of what the process is and some of the main uh, tools that are used within that legal process. So that will walk you through those whole six exam um, topics. And then I wanted to get into a little more detail on some that we found that uh, the counselors seem to have a little more trouble with. So the first one we're going to look at is math, and uh, we offer a math and fair housing boot camp. It's part of our core competency series. It is the last section, so if you want to take just that one class, you can go in and sign up for our core series. We're doing them every month. And uh, it goes through the math and fair housing, which we found to be the two most difficult uh, subjects for the counselors as they prepare. One thing we highly recommend is that on the uh, housingcounselors.com that Rachel just talked about, there is a calculator 
And we really recommend you pull that up on your computer and practice your math using that calculator because that's what you'll use during the test. And I know personally, when I took the test, I have a 12C calculator and it's backwards from everything. So it was really important to get on and get comfortable so that when I got to the test, the math was not a big deal. And I had a heavy math version. So um, that I think will help you tremendously. The next item is memorizing those math topics. And in our class, we give just a summary sheet of the math formulas. You need to just memorize those. And really there's not very many of them. It sounds like it's overwhelming. The income, figuring the gross monthly income is pretty easy. Um, and so figuring those, you know, remembering those won't be tough. And then you really only have four more ratios you have to take a look at. So uh, definitely be, familiar with all of the formulas and the income eligibility calculations, how to do the front end, the back end, the maximum housing uh, expense, and how to figure gross monthly income. And then um, the front end is your housing affordability. We always say when you think front end ratio, that's I'm at the door ready to go in, what's my PITIA, that it's your basic housing cost. Then the back end I've, I'm going to go through the door and walk into my house, and this is all the other debt, the monthly debt that I have that goes with it. So it does not include groceries and utilities and that kind of thing. It's that other debt I would see on my credit report. So it's the furniture and the appliances in the kitchen and the car that's out in the garage. So that's how you kind of remember the difference between front and back end ratios. And then you'll also need to know the FICA requirements by loan type. Um, we have some charts available. There's some charts in the study guide. Unfortunately, it's one of those things you just have to remember. Once you're in the job, you can keep a list by your desk, but um, it's something you just have to memorize because they may ask you, uh, are they going to be eligible for an FHA? Well, you're going to have to compute the front and back end, but you have to know what the ratio requirements are for an FHA to know if they're eligible. So it's one of those items you just have to memorize those um, and be ready for that with the test. The exam questions, some of them may be very simple, um, just kind of looking at a definition and uh, particularly the math problems. A lot of them have extra information. So decide what do I need to solve this problem? And then um, you'll plug in your formulas and it could be that you'll have two or three steps. You might have to compute gross monthly income and then uh, compute one of your other formulas or maybe even a couple of them. So you'll have your whiteboard you can use to hang on to numbers for you, but just be prepared for the, the multi-step that you'll need to do. And if you break it into sections, it makes it very easy. Then we're going to move on to uh, fair housing. Um, again, it's an overall viewpoint. So think of it on a federal level. You'll need to, um, again, we go through kind of the highlights of what people have had issues with in our boot camp. And then memorize uh, and, and know certain things about the fair, fair housing. Um, you do need to be familiar with the dates and the timelines because that history, sometimes they'll ask you a question and you may need to know the order uh, in which they happen date wise. So my recommendation is just to memorize the dates with the timeline and it'll make the test the exam much easier. Um, you also need to know the complaint process. So know your judicial versus non-judicial. Judicial always involves a court, a judge, um, a, a legal document. When you get to non-judicial, it's your um, notice of uh, default, notice of sale, your sale date. So the processes are a little different. And with the non-judicial, it's always a servicer communicating directly with the client, where in the judicial, it's um, definitely court. So keep in mind those different processes. And then you'll need to know there's a, a flow chart in the study guide on the complaint process. Be familiar with that whole process, how it works, and how what the dates are that are related to those. So you have 12 months to file a complaint. Um, that's something that you should be familiar with. How long after a complaint is filed does HUD have to respond? That's 10 days. So those are the things you should be familiar with. Um, accommodation versus modification really does kind of trip people up sometimes. Accommodation is a policy change. So if I need a parking space close to my unit, if I want to have my service dog there and they don't allow pets, those are policy. So that's an accommodation. When we look at modification, it's a construction item. 
So if I'm going to have to put in a ramp or if I'm going to have to put in grab bars in the bathroom, anything that's construction would be considered modification. So there's some information on that and be familiar with those. Um, another one people have trouble with is the FIP versus FAP. So um, the Fair Housing Initiatives Program, what I tell people on that is to think about individual. Um, it's to help the individual victims of discrimination. So FIP money that goes to a fair housing organization helps the individual. FAP money is for the agency or administration. So that money goes to help operate that uh, agency for their uh, capacity building, their administrative costs, their investigative costs. So the A means agency or administration. So if you can remember that, that will probably help you when you get to the test. And then um, just some study techniques and best practices. I know um, Rachel's going to get into some more of this, but we really highly uh, agree with Rachel that the first thing you do is get into the HUD site and read the study guide from cover to cover. Some of the test questions may be in the counselor uh, conversation. So make sure you start with reading the study guide and do that before you take a class. It'll make your class more valuable. Um, take all of the training modules, do the practice exam, do the knowledge assessment, and I love the knowledge assessment. It's 135 questions, but it gives you not only the information, it also gives you the answer and the rationale behind it. Very, very helpful. Um, so use both the practice exam and the assessment tool. There's also some training modules that are um, interactive. There's no audio, but definitely use those too. So that site really offers you a lot to help you get prepared. And then we suggest that you take a class and you also um, may wanna do a study group right before you take your exam. And after you have that class, take your exam as soon as possible. Um, already have it scheduled when you schedule your class because it'll force you to take it and you'll do better on it because that information will be fresh. There's flashcards that are available out there. Um, and we think that sometimes helps some folks with memorization. Our boot camp we've set up with with the fair housing pieces set up with flashcards already built in. So um, that has been a big help. I think having a study buddy is extremely helpful. Even if it's not somebody your agency, now that we're all working remote, you can get on a, a Zoom or a Teams call with somebody at another agency and you know help, help each other out and study and use your <clears throat> flashcards. And we found that to be very helpful. Um, you maybe can talk to some counselors who've taken the exam and ask them, you know, what were some of the things that I need to make sure I study? Uh, what were the harder sections? And so uh, getting those tips from counselors, we don't want them giving you the exact uh, questions, <clears throat> but certainly knowing what to study and, and what was difficult for them would be helpful for you. Um, and then review the tough topics right before you take the exam. It'll keep your memory fresh. So if you're going to a site because they're now opening up, um, get there early you know, have a few minutes to go through your notes. So you can look at those formulas, you can look at the ratios, whatever was difficult for you. And then certainly do that before you um, sign online. And then when you get on to do the exam, go ahead and, and go through the whole question, the whole exam and answer everything you can <clears throat> first. And what you'll find is that that will help you relax because it's amazing how much you know. We know you can do this exam. We know you know this stuff. You just need to relax and let it flow. So go through the whole exam. You can mark things. You can come back and um, go through the question, the next set of questions, you'll, you'll find that, oh, well, I just didn't read that quite right. This is so easy. And then you'll probably have one or two tough questions that you can do at the end. You have two hours to take the exam and that should be plenty of time to take the exam and still have time to go back and review it. So um, with that, that, that finishes a lot of my suggestions. I'm gonna turn it back over to Rachel. Thank you so much, Teresa. Those were some great tips and I really liked what you said. Um, at the end about, you know, scheduling your exam now so that you have a date that you're working towards and you can set a schedule from there. Um, and that kind of transitions us into the next topic here, which is how to prepare for the exam, whether you're taking it online or in person. So um, just to, to echo some of the things that Teresa was saying as well, you know, know what to expect when you're taking the exam in person versus online. And if you haven't scheduled oh, your yeah. exam yet. Let me call you right back. I'm on a, a Zoom. I'll call you oh, right sorry back. about that. Could everyone who calls in just make sure you're on mute? Thank you. Um, 
and we will open the, the you know I see some questions coming in through the chat but we will open the chat up for um, questions at the end and unmute phone lines as well um, so like I was saying uh, make sure that you uh, know what to expect when you're taking the exam in person or online and if you haven't decided um, you know where you're taking the exam yet there are a bunch of resources on the HUD Exchange, there's a HUD Exchange certification exam preparation and testing page that walks through the different requirements. Um, and it might just be helpful for you to take a look at that page and understand the different, um, you know, the different elements of taking it either online versus at an exam center. Um, so that's on the certification landing page if you click exam preparation. This is also linked in the PowerPoint that we'll be distributing after the session, but it, it walks through all of the training and testing websites and then the different elements to an online proctor testing overview and the elements of taking the exam at a testing center. Um, also, please take note that you can request accommodation if necessary. So if you have any um, you know, re reasonable accommodations that are needed, please um, take a look at the reasonable accommodations page on hothousingcounselors.com. And um, th there is a recent um, change to reasonable accommodations that we wanted to make sure everyone is aware of. So if your um, first language is not English or Spanish, um, you can request um, up to an additional hour on the exam um, if you have a different native language and the exam is not available in your native language. Um, the exam is available in Spanish, um, so this applies for um, people that have limited English and limited Spanish proficiency. So we just wanted to make sure everyone knew about that. And then finally, um, you know, arrive early like Teresa said, you, um, <laughs> the exam day is not the day to be in a rush, be late, um, definitely make sure you're on time, relaxed, you have time to review information before you get started, you know what to expect. Um, all of these will help you, you know, actually do better when you take the exam. Um, so a few things we, we want to pilot about taking the exam online. Um, there are some technology requirements involved in taking the exam online. So there are a few different um, resources. In addition to the page that I just showed, there's a bridge article. Um, five steps to success that walks through all of the um, content that you need to know um, for taking the exam online and specifically some of those sort of nitty gritty technology requirements. So there are a few, um, you know, applications and other things you may need to download on your computer that sometimes it takes a little bit to figure out or you might have to get on a call with IT at your agency if you're using an agency computer. So we really recommend if you're taking it online to just know those requirements well in advance so that you're not stressed out trying to run through them right before the time of the exam. Um, and we really do recommend trying to take it online, you know, especially now during COVID-19. Um, it's, you know, a safe and um, easy way to take the exam at home. and. I did want to make sure that everyone knew as well that there's no requirement for freestanding or separate webcam anymore. So in the past, there was um, some specific requirements about the type of webcam that was acceptable for the online proctoring, but you can just use the, you know, the built-in webcam to your computer. So um, that's just helpful to know about the requirements and that requirement changed. Um, I believe it was summer of 2020. Um, other things to know about taking the exam online is that there are online proctors, so make sure you remove sticky notes and papers from your workspace. You'll have to remove, you know, extraneous items like watches, bracelets, necklaces, things like that. And glasses are permitted during the exam, but a proctor may ask you to remove them at some point just for inspection um, during the process. So again, it's just helpful to know some of these um, different factors for taking the exam beforehand. That way, if something comes up while you're taking it, it's you know not a surprise during the process. Um, and finally, again, the same calculator is used for the exam online and at the proctoring site. So Teresa mentioned this, but definitely make sure you have practiced using that calculator 
when you've been studying for the math sections and we uh, find that to be really helpful to just practice using that functionality. And there's a link here to hudhousingcounselors.com where you can use that calculator um, as well. And I will go ahead and put that in the chat. So taking the exam on per in person, um, like Teresa said, arrive early and make sure you have time to go through your um, study cards or any topics that have been traditionally more difficult for you. Um, and there are two forms of identification you must show at the exam site. Um, there are a lot of the same um, requirements about unnecessary personal items and you have to place those in a cabinet or locker prior to entering the testing areas. So really HUD recommends just, you know, not bringing anything with you that's not absolutely essential. Um, and just make sure you print out your assessment confirmation email and bring it with you to your exam. And um, if you wear glasses, again, the test proctor center may ask you to remove them to take a look at them before the exam starts or make sure there's nothing extraneous in your pockets or anything like that. So it's just good to be aware of some of those testing center proctor requirements. Um, again, we have a link to the cal calculator on this page, like I said earlier. It's really helpful to practice using that calculator. So now we want to move on to some questions. Um, I saw someone wrote in the um, chat that they've been using Quizlet and was wondering if other people find it helpful. And someone responded that they will check that out. So that's great. I think definitely finding those online resources that can help you study for the exam can be really effective and figuring out what works for other counselors um, is definitely you know, a really good strategy. Does anyone have a question based on the content that um, either Teresa or I have gone over today or maybe a tip for how they've been, been studying? And if you, um, you can either unmute yourself or you can raise, the ha raise your hand using the hand raising feature and we'll unmute you or you can write in the chat. Um, Linda Carter asked if there are training courses that will assist with the math questions. So I will go back to that math boot camp slide that RCAC has coming up. Um, so RCAC has a math and fair housing boot camp and the core competency workshop. And I'll put that link in the chat. Are there other courses or training modules that deal with math, Teresa, that you know of? Um, and our core competency in the housing affordability, we break our class down by the, the six categories. And the housing affordability is a two-hour session. And we, we have a whole um, series of exercises that are on the math that we have folks do, and then we go over them. And so it, we spend a lot of time in, in that particular section doing math. It's very helpful. And then we do additional different problems in our boot camp. So it's kind of two hits to it from our classes. And then our, our uh, study group also has some math in it. OK, thanks, Teresa. And then there was a question that came in about using the calculator for percentages. So to create a percentage, if you were going to use you know, 10% or 20%, you would type in decimal 2 for 20%. And so if you wanted to divide, um, let's say 100 by 20%, you would multiply 0.2 by 100. And that would give you the answer. Or if you wanted to get, the, get a percentage, you would use the division um, symbol to, let's say you wanted to find out what percent 10 was of 100. So 0.1, um, 10%. So that's the, the way to use this calculator. Um, you have to use your mouse for the calculator. The keyboard doesn't work, so you can't um, you can't type in the the numbers. Um, so just something to be aware of. Does anyone else have a question or maybe a tip that they've used for studying? Yes, I have a question. Um, sure. When when taking the exam. Um, is it possible that if you
if you if it's an area that you uh, you miss, um, we're not getting uh, any specific areas. As just saying, if if you miss something, you say just to study the, everything all over again. But you don't know what areas you missed, so it, it's kind of confusing. I'm just thinking that is it possible that you can actually uh, give some type of credence to the ones that were error that was an error that you so you'll know where, where you really need to study because you have to go over the whole cycle all over again so i know that's a knowledge assessment tool um one of the the reasons that we recommend starting out with that is that it does give you the answer to each question plus a rationale for the answer um, mm -hmm. which is a little different than the practice exam because it does actually you know you can measure your the answer you provided against the correct answer and sort of see which um, which topics you might need to improve on. Um, Teresa, is there anything else you yeah, would the, recommend for that? The other, the other thing is when you get your test results back, when you submit, it tells you right away whether you passed or failed. And it'll send to whatever email is, is in your login information on hudhousingcounseling.com. But it'll send um, your score if you didn't pass. And then it'll tell you, here's the sections that you had difficulty with. So those should match up with your modules. So if you go back to the modules, you should be able to match those up with, oh, well, I can see that fair housing timeline was one of the concerns I had, but it'll it'll send you back to that module. So no, you don't know specifically, but at least that mm -hmm. gives you kind of a general idea. And that seems to have helped some folks. All right. Thank you. And Rachel, this is Robin uh, Pinnock with HUD. And I did want to add to that in regards to Teresa's uh, response that um, only on those tests that people do not pass will you get that detailed information about what areas uh, you were weak in. Thanks for that clarification, um, Robin. And yes, thank you. We have a bunch of HUD staff on the phone. Um, so if anyone, any HUD staff have recommendations as well, please, please share those. Um, I see um, there was a question in the chat that I can get to in just a moment. There are two hands raised, um, Jackie and Miriam. Did one of you want to unmute yourselves and ask your question? I'm Jackie and you just answered my question. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, Miriam, did you have a question? Uh, oh no, sorry, I was looking for the chat room, but that's okay. Um, is it possible we can get a copy of the presentation? Yes, absolutely. I will email email out the slide deck um, with the recording after today's call. Okay, thank you. Of course. And then, um, yeah, thanks, Shauna. Um, someone had a question about um, percentages of FHA um, front end rates. So I don't know if. Um, Teresa, you had any thoughts about that question in the chat, but um, if someone thinks that there's specific feedback about the exam content, you can al always email housing.counseling at hud.gov with that feedback. What we found is that things change over time and keep in mind that while the, the study guide and the test is updated annually, it still we found some of the things in there might not be quite what is necessarily practice. Uh, but my suggestion is just read the study guide and whatever is in the study guide is what you need to know for the exam. If something has changed maybe since then, because certainly our industry changes very quickly right now, then when you get into actual practice and you'd say, oh, well, I, can, I know that FHA has updated that. Uh, percentage, but my suggestion is study the the charts and the guides and everything in the study guide, and that's what you will use on the test. And uh, also, this is Jerry, and and uh, I just want to address that that issue as well. Um, this professional exam relies uh, very heavily on input from the community that are taking the exam, and we love that kind of feedback. So if you see something on the test that you think can be improved or changed or revised, uh, please send us to us that right away because uh, that's the kind of stuff that we, we really, really need. So thank you for that question. That was a good one. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks, Teresa. Does anyone else have a question? You can either chat it in or unmute yourself. Um, 
Uh, while folks think about that, um, I did want to mention something about the online exam preparation. Um, so I forgot to mention this on my slide, but one thing that folks uh, find helpful when they take the exam online is to actually print out some of the technology requirements that they'll need to access um, when they take the exam online, because there is a part of the online exam process where you'll have to shut down um, you know, all the websites and apps on your computer um, to install the software. So we've heard that it's really helpful to print out those instructions, um, have them side by side with your um yeah you know, with your screen and then you can you know you know what's coming next because you have the instructions right there in front of you and you don't have to worry about sort of losing what comes next in the process um and i'll just show this um five steps to success article it's actually from one of our issues of the bridge so it may look familiar to some of you but it really walks through the different process of how to register for the exam, what the technology requirements are, um, how to prepare your exam space, actually taking the exam, and then next steps when the exam is done. And um, you know, this is some some really helpful information just distilled down by um, the you know the people who created the HUDHousingCounselors.com website. So it's it's super helpful and I will go ahead and, and chat this link as well if anyone's interested in reading more about these tech requirements. And Teresa, this is Shauna. There was somebody that wrote in about um, available uh, sessions and said it looked like it was um, there was nothing available at this point in time. Um, and I haven't been able to vet that myself um, just because we're getting toward the end of the hour. But um, I see it says core study group looks like, oh, that was in the past on April 1st. Um, so we so do, we're in the middle of our core competency series now, but I, you know, if somebody wants to sign up just for, mm -hmm. for one session, they can certainly email me uh, and I'll put my email in the chat box. Uh, okay. We do have the core study group. The next one's coming up in April 23rd. That one is open for registration. And then I think we should be opening up, uh, if we're not already open on the core competency for May, which starts May 3rd, that one should be opening soon as well. So um, you can certainly go to the rcac.org website. Uh, there's a section on training and then there's a section on housing counseling training. So you can go straight to that. And Thanks, Teresa. Email in the box in case somebody has additional questions. Okay. And I put in the April 23rd direct link into the box here. Great. Absolutely. Any other questions about studying for the exam, specific topics, how to prepare, or, you know, honestly, anything about <laughs> certification? It's, it's not every day that we have such a, a wealth of <laughs> certification knowledge on one, one phone call with our HUD staff here and Teresa. Um, so just want to make sure everyone gets all their questions answered. And it looks like Linda Carter raised her hand if she wants to unmute, Rachel. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. Um, two questions on the math and fair housing boot camp. Is there a fee for that? Right now, as long as you're a nonprofit, we are scholarshipping. Okay. Okay. And the other question I actually forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. No problem. If you think of it, you can definitely unmute and ask. Oh, I, I, okay. I remember now. Oh, also, great. for the housing, uh, for the Facebook, no, for the Math and Fair Housing Boot Camp, what is, do you go on the uh, HUD Counseling website to get that, or uh, how do you access it? Uh, that one is just go ahead and sign up for the core uh, competency series for that month. And it's the last session. The last session, gotcha. Yeah. Oh. So let me give, I can give you the date of that. The session will be on uh, April 21st, and I'll be doing that session. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. April 21st? Yes. Okay. And it's 10 to noon Pacific time. Pacific. Okay, I'm central, so that will be 
That'd be noon to one your time. That'd be noon to one my time. Okay, thank you so Great. much. Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Teresa, that's super helpful. Um, if anyone else has questions, please feel free to write those in the chat or unmute yourselves. Um, and I just wanted to cover while we get to this question. ICF is still providing technical assistance via the Housing Counseling Technical Assistance inbox, um, which I think most of you have probably corresponded with. Um, so if you have additional questions or additional needs, please email the inbox and we can get those questions answered or set up a phone call with you to walk through your information. Um, we had a lot of people identify housing counseling um, certification study resources as one of their biggest um, needs for technical assistance. So we wanted to make sure that we got out this information um, you know, as quick, quickly as we could via these office hours. But if you have outstanding questions or need additional assistance after this session, um, we definitely want to work with you on those needs. So um, please feel free to email that inbox on the screen and I'll um, copy it into the chat as well um, with any, you know, additional needs that might come up. Oops. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, this is Jackie. Um, when for testing, I guess you have to have um, to pass the test 500. It's a score. So how do you break that down? Is it so many points per sec per section? Teresa, do you want to take that question? Sure. Let me get my mic off. Um, it it's not a, a, a the, what questions are weighted. So uh, something that's just a basic knowledge fact would be worth, that question would be worth less than one that asked you to actually take the information and apply it and analyze. And so it's just a, a standard, you have to have 500 to pass, but each, each question may have a different weight to it. So um, that's why you don't get a percentage and you don't say it's just, you know, five points for each question is because it's weighted and those that, sure. that require more knowledge um, have a higher weight to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that is helpful. That's the only way I yeah. really know to explain it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Teresa, it looks like we have a question um, in terms of registering. People are so excited about your sessions. They want to know if there's a special code they should use since they work as a nonprofit. Any tips uh, there? When, when you go in, it'll it'll give you the it'll have you uh, put it in, and if there's any problems, just email me, and we'll make sure you get taken care of. Thanks, Teresa. And your response to that question about the weighted scoring really um, reminded me of that other comment you made that um, it's really recommended to go through all of the exam content and fill out all of the information that you know right off the bat. And if there's anything you don't know, you can come back to it later, especially if it's a quick fact, you know, you can't remember, maybe that question would be, you know, weighted less than some other questions that you, you do know, but you need to spend a little more time on. So I think that was good advice that you gave earlier in the presentation. Thanks. Any other questions in our last five minutes here? Um, it sounds like um, another person's asking for the code. So yeah, I'm, go I'm, ahead and I don't sorry. Let me see if I can get it for you. Hang on. Oh, OK, if not, they I can also um, type in your email address and they can follow up afterwards. Teresa, no, no worries. We're happy and I can I can get it. You can send it out with the um, the link and the. Information that. Rachel's going to send out for Shauna. OK, great. I clicked on the link and it looks like for the scholarship, um, there's this HCOE code. Um, so I, I think that's, that's potentially that's what people code. are looking for. Yeah. yeah, I just couldn't remember the code and I don't do registration, so I'm sorry. Yeah, that is the code. OK, great. 
And, and if anybody has problems, let me know and we'll help you with it. Okay, thanks. And I don't know if this is a leftover. Um, there was one hand raised, but I think Jackie had already asked her question before, but um, I just saw your hand was still up. Did you have a question, Jackie, or another one? Oh, they, everything was answered. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Um, any other um, tips to share maybe from Teresa or HUD staff that weren't covered today yet or anything you wanted to emphasize? Rachel, um, this yeah. is Robin. Would you go back to the training page? Because it seems like we've got a lot of questions about training that's available and just make sure that people are aware where to go on our website to find out what classes are available. Yeah, and I'll recopy that link into the um, the chat, Robin. So thanks for um, that reminder. Um, but definitely bookmark this page in your browser um, if you want to keep updated on um, trainings that are coming up. Good and ideas. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the pre presentation, this is Training Digest is updated every week and it matches the information that um, Housing Counseling sends out on its HUD listserv. So it covers all of the um, upcoming um, trainings well, by the um, training partners and then um, all of the other Housing Counseling partner trainings are listed on this site as well. So if you're looking for just a quick update on everything that's coming up, um, definitely recommend uh, checking this once a week and you can keep an eye out for any trainings that might be helpful. And all the RCAC upcoming classes are listed here as well. I have a question. Sure. Okay, I'm Deborah Davenport. And I noticed in the chat one lady said she had taken the test and she didn't pass it, but there was an, uh, the percentages of our incorrect uh, on the test. Um, has that happened where the, the test is given wrong information, whereas you cannot calculate to get the right numbers? Or I'm just asking. I don't know who that was or what that was happening for. But I noticed that in the chat box. I'm having a little trouble hearing you, but I think your question was if there's been anything that's been brought to okay. HUD's attention that the, the yeah. math is incorrect um, yes, on the no. exam. And I, I saw that question, and I think, um, to my knowledge, that hasn't been the case. But I think if anything, you know, if counselors feel that information is incorrect, they should definitely email housing counseling at HUD.gov, and they take those comments, um, you know, very seriously, and we'll look at the exam content. But I don't know if any HUD staff have, uh, you know, anything to share about that. Yeah. And I guess that was synonymous with the earlier conversation about the FHA changes because it alluded to there was one question on the test that had the incorrect percentage for FHA front end ratio. So um, I imagine that when we talk about those those the, the, the things are constantly changing in the industry, and uh, I guess that that was the one thing uh, that concerned me about uh, making sure that we have the right percentages and representation for the time that we take the test. And Rachel, my comment on that is that, um, as Teresa said, once a year, we, we are able to update the information on the exam, the training information as well as the exam. So um, all of our training materials have a version date on it, and the exam is, uh, is aligned with the version that's published. So as Teresa said, if you look at the uh, training materials, that's the information that's going to be on the exam. Thanks, Robin. Yeah, so I think just make sure that you are looking at the training materials and make sure that you, you know, have looked at them recently. Um, you know, thank before you. Before you take the test. Thanks, Robin. Thank, thank you. 
Great. And um, I know we're a minute over. Is there any other um, questions that folks have before we wrap up? Yes, I, I have a question uh, and a comment. Sure. Yeah, my name is Caesar. And I, when I was taking the, the test, there were a couple instances that uh, the question was, was formulated in a way that it was a little confusing. But when I received the results, it doesn't really give me a specific feedback of the reason. I want to know what the answer was, but I want to know why. Is any tool or any training that I can provide um, some kind of feedback online that I can use? Yeah, so the knowledge assessment tool, um, I'm not sure if you've taken the knowledge assessment tool, but that really walks through the questions yeah. and the answer with the um, the rationale for uh, the answer okay. to the question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm, I'm familiar with it. I appreciate your feedback. Okay. I, I just need clarification on the uh, the training digest material. Yes. Uh, when we're using that, that's going to be the same information or question that would be uh, comprised on the test. Because I was using, um, I guess, the module books I had maybe from last year. So it's been an update. So uh, I guess answering the questions in the module from last year is kind of uh, obsolete to some degree. Are you talking about the modules on HUDHousingCounselors.com? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you would just have to, yeah, just use the the version of the training modules on HUDHousingCounselors.com now is what's corresponding to the exam content. Okay. Because I had printed out uh, each of the modules and I was using that to study. And when I took the test, it was something totally different. On, on the on the exam as opposed to what I was studying. So there uh, is a section in the if you go into the um, the site itself and I think it's under I'm trying to remember where it is because it moved. There is a section that will tell you what the changes were with that revision. And if you take a look at that, it will it will direct you to where in the study guide there were changes that year. So September, I think the last two have been September and the one prior to that was in August, but September 2020 was the last version. So if you go in, you can just, all you have to do, there's your revision history. All you have to do is go into say section 1.1 and compare it to what you have in print. And most of the changes were to, um, there was quite a few in, in avoiding uh, foreclosure section. And I'm trying to remember there's one other section that had quite a few. Most of them are just wording changes. Um, okay. And certainly the AFFH changed substantially. There were some new definitions they added to that in section five. Hmm. Uh, so, But with this, you can go in and compare the two. And then all you have to do is just mark up your existing study guide on what the changes were. You don't have to probably reprint very much. Maybe you could reprint just one module if there were a lot of changes. But most okay. of them are wording. It's not, there were only a couple sections that had some pretty substantial changes to it. So that, hopefully right. that'll help. Thanks so well, much, that's, Teresa. Well, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and it looks like all the releases are coming out on in September. So anything that you've yeah. accessed since September will match the current exam. And it looks like, um, you know, anything, there won't be additional exam updates until um, September of the following year. As Robin said, the updates are made once a year. All right, um, well, I want to be respectful of folks' time, so we're going to wrap up the session now. There is a session tomorrow at 3 o'clock, um, so if you have additional questions or you think of something else, you can absolutely attend tomorrow's session. Um, we encourage you, you know, to do that, and we will um, send out this information um, uh, following the call with the recording if you need to go back and revisit anything. And again, if you have any more um, in-depth TA needs, please do email that um, address on the screen, OHC Technical Assistance at HUDExchange.info. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you joining today. Thank you.